What is up Insaners and welcome to our team selection video for game week 1. In this one, we'll do a quick review of all the fixtures for game week 1, then move on to our team selection. I'll also discuss some alternate picks that I have in mind and we'll end the video with the best captain picks for the week. Guys, we'll be doing the team selection videos every week, so make sure you hit like and subscribe to the channel. With that, let's get into today's video and we'll start with the game week 1 fixture review. Let's start with the first game guys, it's Arsenal vs the new boys Brentford. Now Brentford are playing their first game in the Premier League in front of the fans. I believe it's going to be a huge game for them. I think they will score against Arsenal and Tony could be massive in this one. Arsenal has gotten wide but I think they've not really looked that great in the preseason games. Having said that, I'm still expecting this to be a good game to watch. Next is Manchester United vs Leeds. Now it's a derby game and it'll be huge for both clubs. Another game where I feel both teams would score especially with the attacking talent both have. Guys, I'm super excited and to be honest, a bit nervous too, being a United fan myself. I'm really hoping that Sancho gets involved in this game. Now moving on, we have Brighton vs Burnley. A lot of people are hoping that Brighton keep a clean sheet against Burnley, but it looks a bit tough. To be honest guys, this game looks like a draw to me. Next we have Chelsea vs Palace. Now Chelsea might play with a slightly weakened team in this one. A lot of players who featured in the Euros might not play this game. Now it also depends on who is playing in the Super Cup match. Might not be a thrashing this one, but Chelsea should beat Palace with a comfortable margin. Coming to Everton, who's playing Southampton at home. Now Benitez's first game and it might be a close one. Guys, I feel Everton is pretty inconsistent even looking at the preseason campaign. I think a lot of managers would have DCL and Dinier and both would be super critical for Everton's success. Southampton on the other hand, they've lost Ings and they have a couple of important players missing, so I think Everton will just edge this one. Then we have Leicester City vs Wolves. Now Leicester looked quite sharp against Man City in the Community Shield game. Wolves might play a back 4 or maybe even a back 3, plus if they play a high line guys, Leicester could really punish them in this one. From a Wolves perspective, Jimenez is back, so they could be a goal for Wolves, but Leicester City should win this one. Coming to Watford vs Aston Villa now, now Watford have looked pretty leaky in defence in the preseason games and Ings, having just moved to Villa, should be motivated to score in this debut game. I think this could be a decent game from an attacking point of view for both teams. Now there are huge hopes for players like Watkins, Bundia and obviously Ings as well. Looking at the overall picture, I think Villa might just come out on top in this one. Next guys, we have Norwich vs Liverpool. Now I think this should be a comfortable game for Liverpool. They've had a good pre-season with Mane, Jota and Salah all playing really well. I don't think so Norwich can hold off the Liverpool attack. Now it'll be a bit too much for them in my opinion. Guys, whichever way you go, a double Liverpool attack or defence, I think a Liverpool triple is very much on the cards, even with Robertson injured. The second game is Newcastle vs West Ham. Now another fixture where a clean sheet looks a bit difficult. Newcastle ended the last season quite strongly and Willock is also a confirmed signing now. Wilson plus St. Maximin are also there guys. Now this could be a high scoring game. West Ham have also struggled in defence, so that lowers the clean sheet possibility in this one. Now coming to the final game guys, it's Tottenham vs Man City. Now this is probably the biggest game of the week. There could be huge drama with Harry Kane starting against his future club Man City. Imagine that spectacle guys, there are too many storylines developing for this game. What would be Pep's lineup? Will Grealish start? Will Romero feature for Spurs? I think he's injured but you never know with these big games. I still feel City is a bit too strong for Spurs and they should win this by a couple of goals. Great, with the fixtures taken care of, let's look at our team selection for the first game week. We'll start with the goalkeepers first. Now we have Sanchez from Brighton and Steele is our second keeper who's also from Brighton. Brighton have the best 4.5 million defensive assets in the game in my opinion guys. They were only behind Chelsea and Man City for XG and big chances conceded last season. Now Sanchez at 4.5 million is great value for money as I think he could be the 4.5 million keeper who will get the highest number of clean sheets this season. As he also had a better baseline BPS last season than most of the Brighton defenders, so he's also likely to get a share of the bonus points when Brighton are to keep a clean sheet. He's not heavy on save points, but given the early set of fixtures for Brighton, I think it's a no-brainer. Now Steele is Sanchez's backup heading into the season, which is why he's in my team as a substitute goalkeeper. Guys, the new signing Sherpin is injured, otherwise he would have gone in. The reason I've gone for the backup also as a Brighton option is quite simple. I personally don't think Foster or any other 4 million option will start and it's better to have two keeper options from the same team just in case one gets injured. 
Realistically guys, it saves me a potential transfer later on when this happens. In defense, we've gone for the Liverpool double up in Trent and Simikas who's expected to play left back in place of Robertson. I know guys, there has been a huge debate in terms of whether Simikas is a viable option, especially if you want Jota. The choice for me is quite simple guys. We'll cover a bit of Jota when we talk about midfielders, but personally, I don't think so he's a nailed on option in the Liverpool team. I think there are a lot of other options in that price range who could be more nailed and be long term options. Guys, Simikas is also a short term option, but at 4 million, I think he's too good to pass up given the fact that he's likely to play against Norwich and Burnley in the opening two fixtures. What happens after that, I'm not really sure. Now, Liverpool have a tough game against Chelsea, so we might not play him anyways, and post that, Robertson might return. Now, guys, we might have to find some value elsewhere to make an upgrade to maybe a Brighton defender, someone like a Weltman, so that's an easy way to ship Simikas out, otherwise he can just stay on the bench as bench fodder. Coming to Trent, guys, who's according to me is an absolute must-have. He got the highest number of FPL points in the entire game in the second half of the season from game week 20 to 38. He has looked quite good in preseason as well, and the fixtures are there to get massive hauls. Yes, he takes a lot of value from the budget, but I think with the added clean sheet potential this year, he could be even better than some similarly priced midfielders. Just to add to that, guys, he has been top for big chances created and expected goal involvement among all defenders this calendar year. He's well rested, having played no football over the Euros so he should be raring to go. Guys, Liverpool are also the bookies' favourites for a clean sheet this week and the numbers back them up. Then we have Luke Shaw in the 11. Now, I've personally gone for him, guys. In our last drafts review video, we did mention some cons of having Shaw, but the way he played for England in the Euros and for Man United, especially in the second half of the season, is good enough to convince me and get him in my team. Shaw has created the most chances among all Premier League players this calendar year and definitely has a higher ceiling as he's likely to record bonus points whenever Man United do keep a clean sheet. Guys, he's on some set pieces as well, which is another plus. Now, Man United have a great fixture run to begin with, which is why Shaw is an easy selection for me. Coming to the bench, we have Ben White from Arsenal. Now, I know Arsenal are sometimes all over the place, but I really feel they should be doing better than they are. They're still a big team with a lot of potential, so 4.5 million is a very good price here. Remember, I'll only be playing him in the more favourable fixtures anyways. Now, the only downside here is his limited attacking potential. That might make a lot of managers go for Weltman, especially if he plays as a wing-back for Brighton. Guys, he's also a 4.5 million defender in the game. Now, you could even look at Luke Ayling playing as a full-back for Leeds. I think he's always looked somewhat threatening, but he didn't quite seem to get the attacking returns last season. This season, guys, it could be a bit different, but your clean sheet potential for him is still quite low. Our final player is Zamati, guys who has for sure replaced Fofana in the Leicester defence. He had a great Community Shield game against Man City and he could very well partner Soyuncu Chu at least till the time Evans is out injured and Leicester don't sign a new centre-back. At 4 million, you really can't ask for more here. Great, now let's get into our midfield then. I think majority of the managers are going with the Salah Fernandes duo and it's just the easiest way to make sure that you don't screw it up in the early part of the season. Given Salah's performances last season, guys, particularly in the later half, Together with Liverpool's early fixtures, he's an absolute set and forget option for me. There's actually no need to complicate this further guys and let's move on. Now I personally think that Bruno Fernandes is more up for debate here. He looked overworked and ineffective towards the end of last season and this continued in the Euros as well guys. I'm not sure if he's had enough of a break to go into the season fresh and back to his best. That said guys, it's still a big risk going without him. Now we all know how he can easily score big FPL points with a late penalty and 3 bonus points. Guys, I have been there and I know how it feels. You can think of going without Bruno, but I still feel it's a big risk at the start of the season. Maybe after we see out a couple of weeks with Bruno and Sancho playing together, this decision might get a bit easier. Coming to our other midfielders guys, now we have Mahrez and this is where a lot of teams will kind of differ. Now he's a very interesting option for me, a bit risky as there's always a chance that Pep might rotate and bench players that you expect to start. Mahrez had a great preseason. Now he was also quite nailed on City's right side last season. This season as well guys, the competition will be with the likes of Torres. Now I expect him to start at least the first couple of games. Then it's a bit like Jota or Greenwood, but in a different price range of course. A lot of people are expecting Jack Grealish to start, especially on the Man City forums. Now he's 8 million and that 1 million saving over Mahrez was a long way which I can use to upgrade my other budget midfield options. Coming back to Grealish guys, now we know that he's a proven player. 
he was only second to Kevin De Bruyne for chances created per 90 last season. He looks like a decent pick which allows me to have a city player with probably the least amount of rotation. Guys I really like the Norwich fixture in game week 2 as well, so maybe I'll downgrade to Grealish. Let's see, for now it's Mares, but that could change to Grealish before the deadline. The other two options that we have are budget guys. Right now we have gone for Rafinha and a slightly risky Ben Rama. Let's talk about Rafinha first. Now he's a great option at 6.5 million. I think we all know that by now. Definitely underpriced in the game this year. Guys in only 26 starts, he scored an impressive 6 goals and 10 assists with great underlying stats. He's also on corners and most free kicks, giving him a lot of avenues to score points. I think with the way Leeds attack and create chances, Rafinha will get a plenty of chances to score and assist. Guys, he has to be the standout option in the 6.5 million price category. Now, Ben Rama is more punty in nature. Like Mares, this pick could also very well change. He has been one of the standout pre-season performers for West Ham, and he got a lot of praise from Moyes and the West Ham players after the Atlanta game. Guys, I think Moyes is trying to get him ready for the Lingard role, and he could be an interesting option at 6 million. The only worry I would have is his minutes on the pitch. Now the fixtures are good from an attacking sense and the matchup versus Newcastle also looks favorable with the Toons being the worst side for most chances conceded from the right and 18th worst from the center. Now there is a decent chance that I can do an upgrade from him to Barnes who has also looked pretty sharp for Leicester. Guys Barnes is a slightly safer pick and getting Grealish would cover the high ownership very nicely. Overall I think the midfield looks pretty solid. I think the only player I'm a bit worried about is Son. So the fixture against Man City could be tricky. Son has looked in good touch throughout the pre-season, playing a lot more central in the absence of Harry Kane. Fixtures from game week two to four look really good, guys, and I might want him for those games. Now, if I have Mares, it becomes slightly easier to reach Son, who's just a million more than Mares. I don't think downgrading Fernandez would be an option right now, so the funds would have to come from attack, or maybe by moving the fifth midfielder to a cheaper 4.5 midfielder like a Gilmer or a Brownhill. Rest of the picks are pretty certain, guys. I still feel going for City players is risky, but it might be okay for the first few weeks when the rotation is probably the lowest. Great. So now let's finish off with the strikers. Danny Ings is the first name in our lineup, guys. Now he looked pretty sharp in Villa's friendly game. He got himself a goal and was constantly getting himself into goal-scoring positions. I expect him to be on penalties as well, and with a big chance conversion rate of 60% over the last two seasons, guys, we all know that he's a proven finisher. A huge part of Ings' appeal is Villa's fixtures to begin with. Now Villa face Watford, Brentford, and Newcastle in the opening three fixtures. It really doesn't get much better than that. The only worry here would be a possible injury concern with Ings, but we have a lot of options like DCL, Bamford, or even Wilson in and around this price range, and I think we should be good here. Guys, his fixtures after game week three look tough, and we might have to replace with the options I just mentioned, or even Jimenez, who has a really nice set of fixtures from game week four. Our second option is Antonio. For me, Antonio's potential as an FPL asset has never been in doubt, guys. The concern with him has always been injuries, which is why I have my doubts on him once the Europa League starts. But for now, he's a fantastic asset to begin the season with. West Ham were right up there for XG last season, and Antonio is their main goal threat. They haven't signed a backup striker either, so they are heavily reliant on him for goals heading into the season. Guys, that is a good and a bad thing at the same time. Now he played a lot of minutes in the pre-season games, so that's a good sign. Plus his link-up play with the likes of Ben Rama and Bowen looked quite good. In case he also gets injured, guys, we have a lot of options to choose from, and there's nothing to worry here. Our third striker is a 4.5 million option. Now you can go with anyone to be honest. We are playing a 3-5-2 at the start, and hoping, and I'm really hoping, guys, that Tony doesn't go crazy in the first few games. This was our team for game week one, guys. I would say I'm pretty certain in terms of the structure. A couple of changes could still happen in midfield before the deadline, but the rest is good to go. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about this team. Do you think I should avoid Man City players at the start? Do let me know. Now let's look at a few standout captaincy options. I think Salah is the clear favorite here, guys. Norwich, as I mentioned earlier, would struggle to cope up with that Liverpool attack. Liverpool are favorites to score three plus goals in this game, and Salah could easily get a brace, maybe even more depending on how the game goes on. It's a no-brainer, guys. If you want to play safe. Just go with Salah. The other option is to go for Bruno Fernandes, who performed really well against Leeds last season. Now there's so many outlets for points with Bruno. Plus he's facing Leeds, who looked quite open in the pre-season games, where they failed to keep a single clean sheet. Guys, Bruno should comfortably be the second most captain pick for this week, and you won't be wrong to captain him instead of Salah. In case you're okay taking a bit of a punt, then Danny Ings looks like a good option too. He's facing Watford, who also might struggle to keep a clean sheet against Aston Villa. 
as he's in fact one of the bookies favorites to score this week and it's quite easy to understand why. Now in case you're looking to take a few risks, then you have the likes of Antonio playing against Newcastle, Jota against Norwich and Greenwood against Leeds. I really think targeting the Norwich and the Leeds fixture is a sensible thing to do. I'm just not 100% sure whether both Jota and Greenwood will start in game week 1. A lot of people are betting on both starting but you never know guys. Antonio is another very interesting choice but if you ask me personally, I won't look beyond Salah and Bruno. Game week 1 feels a bit too risky to take a punt on captaincy and I would want to stick to the favourites. So that'd be all for my side guys. I really hope you'll find this video helpful in setting up your team for game week 1. If you want some more help, you can check out our other videos that we did earlier. You'll find a link to our FPL playlist on the screen just about now. Hit the like button guys if you like our team selection video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Now there's a lot of good stuff coming up this year and I'm sure you wouldn't want to miss all of that. We'll be back now for the deadline stream guys. This will be an hour and a half before the deadline. So do join us if you have any last minute questions or transfer queries. All the best to all FPL managers. Enjoy your week and I'll see you in Saners next time. Thank you.